cop watch, policing the police every single day. They must ensure that they're prepared and trained so this doesn't happen again. I believe there was a clear lack of training and preparedness on the part of those officers. In my opinion, lawsuits like this are the only way to get attention of local governments and law enforcement officials to get them to change their ways. Our goal and our hope is that they start to take things a lot more seriously, start to give the families and the victims more help, a lot more help than they have been given, and of course to prevent things like this from ever happening again. because their lives are worth more than yours. Parkland sued, officers choked. Incompetence and poor training cost lives, students allege. By Elliot Kleinberg. Gatehouse, Florida. Coral Springs incompetence, poor training, and inaction cost lives in the Valentine's Day shootings that killed 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, 15 current or former students claim in a new federal lawsuit. The suit says the 15 suffered at least psychological injury and trauma during the February 14th mass shootings, which left 14 students and three adults dead and 17 other people injured. None of the 15 plaintiffs was shot, lawyers said. Law enforcement choked, Solomon Radner, a Detroit area lawyer who filed the lawsuit said Wednesday at a midday news conference at a hotel about a mile north of the school. He said this lawsuit, which seeks unspecified damages, was filed in federal court because it alleges constitutional rights were violated and because local courts in Florida cap suits against local governments at $300,000. Recent graduate Audrey Diaz, one of the plaintiffs, said that on the day of the shooting, she was thinking about prom and graduating, but some of my friends who were killed that day weren't able to go to these events. Her voice breaking, she said, we thought we were safe at school and we would always be protected, adding, we deserved more from our law enforcement. In addition to Diaz, the suit names another adult student. See Parkland, A2. Parkland. From page A1. John Carlo Mendoza, as a plaintiff. The remaining 13, who are minors, are listed with a parent or guardian's name but are identified only by their initials, LS, GEM, NV, ET, CMW, CDW, AJT, TM, GB, BADGE, KJSH, RD, and KJM. Confessed Parkland gunman Nicholas Cruz faces a possible death sentence in the 17 first-degree murder counts stemming from the shootings. Cruz also is charged with attempted murder in the shootings of the 17 who survived. Authorities have said Cruz and his younger brother, Zachary, moved to the suburban Lantana home of a family friend after their mother died of pneumonia in November 2017, leaving them orphans. After the friend said Nicholas Cruz could stay only if he got rid of his guns, he moved to a northern Broward home. He was staying there when, authorities say, he took an Uber to the school, armed with an AR-15 assault rifle and a cache of ammunition, and opened fire. Almost immediately after the massacre, the Broward County Sheriff's Office came under scrutiny after revealing that school resources deputy Scott Peterson, who lives in suburban Boynton Beach, stood outside despite hearing gunfire from within. This week's suit one of several filed in the aftermath of the shooting says Peterson's arbitrary and conscience-shocking actions and inaction directly and predictably caused children to die, get injured, and get traumatized. It says Jan Jordan, the Broward Sheriff's commander at the scene, refused to allow emergency personnel to enter the school, even into the safe areas, to save lives. And it says Andrew Medina, a Broward school's guard, recognized Cruz as a known danger but did not stop or question him or lock down the school, instead radioing ahead to another monitor. It says Medina did nothing, not even say two little words that could have saved lives, code red. It said Broward had a policy that barred officers from declaring a code red unless they saw a gun. And it says three other unidentified law enforcement officers, listed as John does, 
stood outside the building with Peterson, guns drawn, but also didn't go in. It claims that during what it called eight minutes of hell, numerous failures by numerous government actors, including law enforcement, strongly continued, sick, to shooter's ability to carry out this horrific attack without which this attack could not have happened. By the time the building was declared safe for entry, the suit says, there was no need everyone had already been brought out by police or was dead. Some of the blood is on Jordan's hands, as is the trauma that the victim suffered for an unnecessarily prolonged period of time. The lawsuit also lists as defendants Broward County School Superintendent Robert Runcie and Broward Sheriff Scott Israel. The suit said BSO either has a policy that allows killers to walk through school killing people without being stopped or that it has such inadequate training that the agency is incapable of carrying out policies properly. The suit also says the Broward Sheriff's Office received many dozens of calls from 2008 to 2017 warning them about crews, and did not even do anything to ensure that Shooter did not live out his sick dream of shooting up the school. The suit says Runcy was aware of the terrible lack of security at the school and yet chose not to fix it. It says Runcy had been warned many times by many people that Douglas was a primary target for a school shooting for a number of reasons and also knew Cruz was a threat. The lawsuit does not specify why Douglas was seen as a target for a school shooting. Radner also would not say. The suit also claims authorities, including Peterson, violated the constitutional rights of the student identified as TM when they wrongfully detained him the morning of the shooting and improperly searched his belongings. The suit says Peterson accused the student of selling drugs after finding $200 in his bag, and TM replied the money was to take his girlfriend out after school for a Valentine's Day dinner. Broward County Public Schools and the Broward Sheriff's Office said Tuesday morning they do not comment on active suits. The Broward County attorney said it had not yet seen the suit. Some parents and students of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School are filing a federal civil rights lawsuit today, which alleges several Broward County officials, quote, failed to stop the shooter during that attack almost five months ago. This, as that same community of students and survivors, has been working to turn their pain and experiences into a grassroots movement. They're calling it the road to change, where they stop in cities all across America to talk about gun safety and to help register people to vote. And just a few days ago in Dallas, the students recorded a tense conversation with what they call counter-protesters, members of a gun rights group called Open Carry Texas. The students were challenged on issues like mental health, arming teachers, and what happens next is remarkable. Would it be accurate to, say, to characterize what you're saying is that guns are part of the problem, but it actually goes a whole lot deeper than guns? This is a very nuanced issue, uh, but I think the easy access in some of these areas to these firearms does escalate the violence, especially in Chicago. Those 150 hours of training mean nothing in that one's inside. That's because you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to your most basic level of training. Exactly. You know, and no amount of training can train you out of that instinct. And that's my, big, my biggest reluctancy to uh, specifically putting more guns in schools, which I'm sure you guys can understand. You know? I, don't, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I, I, see where you, I can see where you're coming from. I, mean, I, I can respect your opinion. Coming. I respect your opinion. That's fine. Well, that's why I asked them from the get-go uh, what their agenda was as far as, you know, Democrat policies or whatever. That's what I asked them, and they said they're not anti-gun. They're just for common sense, whatever. But that's why we've been debating the whole time. But they're not. They're literally not trying to take guns away from them. That's what I hear anyways. But, you know, you hear a lot of things from inside. You hear a lot from inside, too. Yeah. Like, I know not this is, this is what creates America. This is what America's about. Come on, come on together. Come on. Our event just ended. Our revenge has ended. With me now, Matt Deitch. He is a former student, one of those who was at the center of that conversation. Matt, uh, you are in that video. We see it end with a handshake. Tell me what that man in red, the red hat, said to you. Uh, the man in the red hat at the end of the conversation told me that this was the most American thing he'd ever experienced, the ability for us to come together and actually have a conversation about how we can actually save lives.
these youths who may want to retaliate against him physically. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Cop Watch, and I just wanted you to know that uh, I am using this stuff under fair use. And uh, also, uh, remember to like and subscribe this channel. Uh, also, too, uh, keep in mind I do not make any money on YouTube. Uh, this is uh, five hours work a day, uh, you know, fighting for freedom. And uh, I do, I, you can donate with PayPal and Patreon. Uh, I just want you to think about this. If everybody gives uh, to PayPal and Patreon, Patreon is every month. Actually, PayPal you can do every month. I have 12,000 subscribers. If everybody gives, I can uh, quit my regular job and go full-time investigations on Charlotte County and possibly even more and beyond. So just keep that in mind. If everybody helps out, I can go full-time doing this. Thanks.